Hi guys and welcome back to another video. Today I'm going to talk a little bit about how I went about painting this sun toasted skin type texture, but for now I'll talk a little bit about the overall color palette that I chose, how I chose what colors I was going to use for the line work, and then I'll get into talking a little bit more about the skin when we get to that. But first things first, I always make sure that I do a color count before I choose the micron pens that I'm using since I use colored pens, I want to make sure that they correlate with the final colors. And this one, I wanted to get a little bit broken out of a system of doing the same colors and over and over again. So I went with much warmer tones, which are colors that I don't normally go with. But ultimately, I ended up deciding on going with a brown micron pen for most of her. I did her hair and her skin with this, with this brown micron pen. And then for the more unearthly or special effect type details in this piece. I went with this very vibrant cherry red micron that helps them stand out and it helped me think through what areas that I want to be treated in a much more saturated way and what areas that I want to be more natural. I also went in with black for just a very small detail at the beginning. I did her lips in black because I knew that I wanted it to be very dark. But ultimately I do actually go back in after I started painting this with a black micron pen to add certain elements to it. Uh, specifically, I go in and I darken the lashes on her eyes since the contrast starts to get a little bit lower after I painted her skin. And that's one of the things that I was most concerned about getting into using colored microns for doing watercolors like this is I was afraid that as I worked on it, that those colors would no longer fit or work with the color palette that I had going on. And it's actually very easy to take another micron pen, as long as it's darker, to re-outline things or even just do it in specific areas. And it allows me to be able to adapt and to move forward with the way that I'm working on it. And one of the things that I cut out of the video, since you can't see it at all, is basically me painting with invisibleness, but I use a masking fluid and I went in with the jewels that are floating around her neck as well as her earrings and her tattoos, which those are all things I just want to make sure that they're nice and clean until I was ready to address them. And I do have the masking fluid that I use listed down in the description. I'm actually extremely happy with this stuff. I don't remember what brand it is, but again, I'll have it listed down below which one I do use because I've had issues in the past with them having a little bit more of a fight to get them off my paper, but this is extremely clean when it comes off. But anyways, I, I put that down and I let it dry and then it was time to paint. And this is after I, again, have done color comps. So I know the placement of everything, but I find that it's really exciting to move from a color comp to the final because the final always has so much more dimension to it as far as the layering and the glazing goes because I can build up way more than I can on my color comps and I usually or at least I try to make sure that it matches that color the color comp that I started with but it's just really fun to be able to watch as it comes alive it becomes more and more complex because of that. And finally, for the skin color, I actually went in with one solid layer first. Usually what I'll do is I will leave certain areas still white with the paper so that I can fill it in with glazing afterwards. But oftentimes that artificially tends to make the skin colors very light. And I wanted this one to make sure that she had more of the tanned rosy look to it. So I wanted to make sure that right off the bat, I wasn't accidentally falling into that trap of limiting myself. So I made sure that the full layer to begin with was this starting off layer. Now, when it comes to watercolors, there's definitely a lot more advanced ways to deal with it, but this helped me to think through it, how I was going to layer it. And since I did do my color comp, I knew how the glazing of the shadows would react with this base layer and how I'd be able to build up her rosy cheeks and the freckles that I wanted. So ultimately I was really happy with the final outcome of it with this kind of a method. And to get a nice smooth flat wash with watercolors, it's relatively simple. I definitely recommend that you practice it on scrap pieces of paper, actually to dedicate time practicing it. I need to do a little bit more practicing of it myself since it's been a little bit of a while since I've really diligently made sure that I had that because when I was painting her skin base, I had a little bit of an issue where it started separating a bit where I wasn't working 
in the way that worked best for making sure that you get flat washes. So basically when you're wanting to create a flat wash, you want to make sure that the edge of the paint is always very wet. There's basically a puddle there. And then when you go to another area and you have to bring it down, you add a puddle at the end and then you go back to the other area where there's still a puddle of water because you made sure that there was plenty there and then you bring that down. The issue with streaking and separation comes from two different areas of paint where they're drying at different times and then they start basically the pigments in the paint start drying in different ways and you can see those lines or you can see where they separate. So for this one, I tried really hard to make sure that I was keeping all areas as wet as possible, but there's a little bit of an issue, but the good news about the technique that I'm using and the texturing that I do on the skin is that that is entirely camouflaged by the time I'm done with this. And I know I'm getting a little bit behind on the part that I'm actually painting the skin, but after I get the base layer down, I went in with a stippling brush, which is actually just an oil painting brush. It's perfect for this because it has a very, well, relatively stiff bristles that splay out so I can get a bunch of little dots very quickly. But I used that brush and I just dabbed on this very rosy sunburn kind of a color over the tops of her cheeks and her nose. Since that is where the sun hits the most is that and the top of the uh, forehead. And that's where most freckles that are caused by the sun are. They, they center where the sun hits the most and the least amount of shadow is happening on the face. So that's where I centered it. But I also wanted the light to be coming from below. So in the end, there's also a shadow that was being cast on the top of her cheeks and on the top of her nose as well. So it did end up pushing the top of her cheeks to be very dark, which I actually really liked how it ended up. It is a totally different kind of application than I normally do. So I liked that it ended up looking quite different. And I think that it really helps her eyes pop and they look a lot more smoldering and lava-esque. So in the end, I'm, I'm really happy with the way that there was contrast happening between her eyes and the darkness of her cheeks and the shadows and the rosiness that was happening overall. And then I actually did the shadows with a warm purple. I still wanted the light to be very warm. And I mention this every once in a while, but a great rule of thumb for figuring out the colors for your highlights and your shadows is that if you have a warm light, then you'll have a cool shadow. So I wanted there to be a cool shadow. And I made sure that I chose a pigment that was very soft, I guess you could say, is that it would really let the color underneath come through. It's not a very strong pigment. It doesn't have a lot of opacity to it. It's very transparent. So I knew that this would glaze really well with it without suddenly becoming very contrasted with her skin color, which is something that I wanted to be aware of. I wanted to make sure that it added depth and shadow, but it didn't suddenly become out of control and adding too many other colors to it. Or I definitely didn't want it to get very muddy in her skin tone. So because it was a very transparent and light layer for the shadow, it allowed a very nice happy marriage between the two colors without it canceling each other out. And I think the background is something that I'm not 100% sure how I feel about it. I do think that it does show me that I really need to practice more on blending colors together. I can do graded washes pretty well where one color blends evenly into another, but when it comes to something where I want the watercolors to behave the way watercolors do and I want them to intermingle but still have core areas that remain that same color. I haven't quite got the hang of it yet. So this one got a little bit more muddy and textured and not quite the right way, but at least it was something that I was learning and I was figuring out some of the techniques that do work and some that don't work for me for being able to create this blended watercolory type background. So I can definitely improve that in the future. That's for sure. But I think it's acceptable for what it is today. And then the final details, I just went in with my white gel pen, which I think is actually a jelly roll pen. And I actually use my gouache as well. I tend to use one or the other oftentimes, but today I ended up wanting them both in this piece. I used my white gel pen to outline those lava rock the glowing elements in this piece so that they had just a little bit of a pop out of the background. I also, again, made sure that I darkened the layer around or the line work around the character that was separating the background with a black micron pen because 
it got really messy and blotchy looking because the line work was relatively quite light at the beginning. So strengthening that extra border really cleaned up a lot of the areas that needed fix. But I actually did that quite a while ago at some point, but it was a really important step to help this piece look a lot more finished. And that is it for today. As always, I do have this painting available at my art shop. There's a link down in the description. There's also a link to my Patreon and all of the tools that I use to create this painting. So if you'd like to know a little bit more about any of that stuff, it's all listed down below. And it will be getting a new PO box very shortly, but I actually still have access to my old one. So if you send anything there, I'll still receive it. I'll still have my old one down below since I don't have my new address yet, but that is about it for today. So thank you guys so much for watching. I will see you all next Wednesday for my next video. So I'll see you guys then. Bye.